Dzień dobry Państwu. Piotr Szymeczny, Festiwal Kultury Żydowskiej. Kontynuujemy rozmowy ukazujące sytuację Żydów w Europie i na świecie po krwawym ataku Hamasu z 7 października. Dzisiaj rozmawiam z Adamem Benunem, który obecnie mieszka w Berlinie, w Niemczech, ale pochodzi z Izraela. Hi Adam. Hi. Hi. It's uh, October 7 and you hear about the attack of the Hamas in Israel. And what are your feelings now? Well, I heard about it quite early in the morning. Uh, actually, as soon as I woke up, usually, I mean, it's Shabbat, so I try not to look at my phone and stuff like this. I keep it in my own way. But uh, somehow this morning I had the feeling that, that I should look. I had the feeling of somehow to worry about my my parents and i looked and i saw that my father posted a picture of the supermarket next to his home uh, on flames so and he reported that there were falls of rockets he lives in rehovot that's probably like 40 kilometers away from gaza so i already opened the morning with the feeling like okay there is an attack but like you know many times there are rockets so i thought okay this is like kind of the same but I woke up, uh, I told my wife, uh, there has been an attack on Israel. My father got uh, hit next to his house and, and I have to go online to see what's going on. And it was also still unclear at the beginning. It was more reported like a, like a, like a rocket attack, but in the same time, it was clear that it's something quite serious and quite severe. So I tapped into the to to the news basically from 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 this moment on and uh, and the news started coming in that actually there was an invasion uh, of a lot of people and the, the military is not under control of the situation and I started getting messages also on WhatsApp groups uh, of people from Israel because my friends the the place I grew up in Muscat Batya is uh, was also. Uh, uh, attacked that day three rockets fell there um and so it became obvious that there is some kind of wider event there um and yeah th as the news started tapping in it was very very clear that there's something serious they didn't even report what exactly but they said we are at war i think they already had the information but they didn't want to to kind of scare the public um and so I was very, very worried and 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 you know confused about the situation. Um, we went out to have coffee here somewhere, uh, and I already felt like the street. I live right. I live in Neukölln in Berlin, and right near the very kind of Arab uh, street, Zonenali. Um So I started hearing like a little bit honks and celebrations, and then I saw live images of of uh, of people celebrating with candy so, so you have heard celebration on uh, yeah definitely yeah. i heard rocket uh, like rocket celebrations not 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 weapon rockets but just like party rockets and honks uh, and i saw images of people uh, handing out can candy and i recognized the place not two streets away from here but i didn't see it with my own eyes but and I kind of knew that uh, that they are celebrating, and uh, I dreaded this moment. Also, this is partly I told Anna. Uh, I'm afraid to go through Zonen Elite and to see them celebrate. I I know I kind of know it from from Israel as well that there are celebrations after something like this happened. But still, then we still didn't know the 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 size of the attack. Uh, but ever since this this moment, it was like a, kind of a different mode. Like history turned its page on 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 our faces. I think it was felt in all the world, but for sure I did as well. And the next days were filled with my windows being shaken from celebrations or demonstrations, even much before the Israeli attack. Back the Israeli counter attack started even there was already lots of uh, of uh, uh, riots kind of 
thing here that they, that they take a tire or something and burn in the middle of the road and police. I even have a picture that I took right here out of my window of like this armored police standing standing outside waiting to go in. And I was afraid. I was afraid. But there was one point where I opened the window to see because the demonstration right here arrived right at the junction where uh, where I live. And I opened the, the window to see what's going on. And one of the Arab guys that was participating in the demonstration asked me in German if he can hide in my place from the police. So so of course, I, uh, I refused and closed the window. But it was a very shaken feeling. Like we returned to a different um, mode. Like at one moment we were again the kind of Jews, uh, persecuted in the in the uh, in the diaspora or something. Like it, I think for for a lot of Jewish people, it you know reminded obviously of the pogroms and stuff and 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 the, the worst attack that was on the Jewish people since uh, the Holocaust basically. So it kind of woke up all these trauma that uh, exists in a, in every Jew, I think. Um, and also there was a feeling of I, I felt like here on the street next to me I was afraid to go and get coffee in the corner because I know all of, of of the Arab guys go there to to drink and I didn't know what would be their reaction And uh, but I went kind of anyway sometimes and I saw uh, you know they were wearing the scarf the, mm -hmm. the kafia and walking proud like this like there was a feeling of of kind of thugs being proud of 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 the act and 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 it was quite uh, weird weird scary uh, i also have a, a neighbor here that uh, his family comes from gaza uh, and we are we are in in good in good relations normally we respect each other and we greet each other but i was afraid then to see him or i was afraid to see his reaction and i didn't know and it took a few days before before i met him but I did meet him, and, uh, and we kind of shook hands, and 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 you know, agreed to 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 be respectful neighbors, as far as I can see. But he also like didn't condemn the thing. He he kind of justified the acts. He said uh, something like, hey, "You need to understand these people live in a jail." These people, and I, and I just tried to, you know, so not he, confront. Mm -hmm. So he, this guy and uh, uh, accepts or. Uh, agrees with the uh, with this attack or this not? was my feeling I, I i felt like this was the subtext i don't want to put words in his mouth but i think this was for me the subtext he basically said you need to understand these people live in a in a jail or whatnot and and and, and so this is justified then okay so and, we can uh, so we can uh, think that he's the hamas supporter i suppose <laughs> I think I, I, you know, I, again, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I know that uh, I know that he's very uh, religious, and from the way that he kind of refused to, he didn't say he could have, you know, he could have said this is a horrible, you know, horrible act, and I don't stand behind it. He didn't say anything like that. He said, he said, uh, uh, you need to understand uh, these people as so and so. And then I told him, ah, but what about those who are celebrating on the street? And 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 he told me they are worried about their families. Um, okay. I, I don't, if I, what, what Please continue. I, yeah, yeah. No, I, I didn't buy. I didn't buy what he said, but I also didn't want to confront him. I just want to keep uh, good neighbor relations. My my agenda about uh, mm -hmm. you know is not to bring the conflict here. I feel like I am a guest in the country. I am a guest in in Germany, and I don't want to. I don't want to wave my flag. And I don't want to evoke any any problems for the police here or, or, or anything else. I'm I'm like grateful for 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 the hospitality and 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 you know, and this is it. So I find it a, a little bit like. Um, but this street, anyway, is not only where close to where, where I live. Is anyway, or in, in, in every time, it's like the most uh, Arab street, and there 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 are shops that they are selling the. The Quran books and the and the map of all of the land of Israel, of course, from the river to the sea, and uh, knives. There is a shop right next to where I live. This is what they're selling, and their flags, and so. And the supermarket I go to sometimes to buy tahina. Uh, they had two big flags set up as soon as it happened. 
and it was very obvious that the three tiers is uh, um, expressing you know support and and uh, and beyond I would even claim with it really and this is also what surprised me because when in previous to the 7th of October, you could have claimed you saw like a, let's say, pro-Palestine uh, uh, demonstration in, in Europe. You could claim, oh, OK, it's because, I don't know what, 67, ever since 1967, there is uh, military control uh, over the over the West Bank and then and, and they are protesting against this. But what really surprised me was to see that it was the opposite, that actually the, the highest level of of violence that was on this street was directly after the massacre and not after the retaliation not after the you know it took a long while for the israeli army to actually go into the gaza strip they took their time to prepare so it was not in i didn't feel like it was in um in uh, you know protest over the reaction or anything like that i felt like it was more like sharks that have smelled the blood and now they are coming and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it woke up all the old ghosts, and I think it disillusioned a lot of people uh, in Israel for sure, and outside in, of Israel as well, uh, because the, the 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 whole the whole I I would claim even that the whole idea that that is behind this place in Cologne, where there are many people from all over the world, is 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 multiculturalism. Um, But there is something about it that broke, you know, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're using this multiculturalism in order to threaten uh, certain people and you are not respecting the the basic rules to, 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 to allow it to exist, then it's not so cool anymore, is it? Uh, you, uh, you live in Icon. Uh, you said that uh, close to the Muslim uh, district, yeah? So you and you you have seen a lot of marches. These marches were quite big. And yeah. how do you find yeah, how do you find them? These marches, these people who take part in marches and uh, and uh, because in marches take part not only uh, Muslim but also normal yeah. European people from Germany and other countries. Yeah. So how yeah. do you find it that uh, this this link this the support of Hamas and and uh, Gazans? Yeah, I, I find it uh, you know of course intimidating. I I wanted to avoid. I was really in in kind of a, a, a survival fear. I was taking my daughter to to the kindergarten and I was looking at every point like really kind of in a, in a, in a survival mode. So I was not looking for it i you know i had the idea to go there and maybe make film and see it to show the world how how it is and stuff like this but i was just kind of trying to keep to 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 my own because i knew i knew it but there were a few demonstrations that i couldn't avoid i just went out on my bike here towards uh hammer platz uh, and i saw one of these demonstrations where the majority of people wore european uh or other nationalities not not necessarily uh arab but more like kind of a left far left wing demonstration or something like this and what can i tell you they are chanting from the river to the sea i take it very very personally because my my mother my sister and her little children and my father and all my friends and all you know my loved ones they all live from the river to the sea mm -hmm. so when you chant from the river to the sea palestine will be free mm -hmm. uh, I, I I I cannot not take it personally, but I understand that it is a mixture of ignorance and and not but not only but I mean I, I anti-Semitism. Like, hmm? anti anti yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, but you know, listen. Uh, just think, what will happen with the Jews? Yeah, when Palestine will be free from the river to the sea, where where they should go? Work. To the sea, to, to the, the sea. sea. It's not yeah, because it's not theoretical. Not, they, not they, to they, other they, European countries. Yeah. Yes. They have they have a, a, a written document, mm -hmm. like the, the the vision, yeah, of Hamas, and they are saying what should be happen for them. Basically, 
they 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 they're saying something like we will throw them to the sea except the uh, engineers and people like this that can help them with technology in in order to also then export islam further on hamas this is uh, plo they just want from the river to the sea they are not about the the you know the, <laughs> the good ones they only want from the river to the sea they're not about like world islamic uh, uh, jihad um you know this event it's it's still an ongoing thing it's like something happened that that you can't just ignore and go back to your life so ever since then i'm studying a lot um i have to say i went back to go more to the synagogue like it made me connect to my own identity more i realized that there's a lot of identity denial that is involved with the illusion that we can have peace with these people it's because we wanted to be um just normal like any other people like any other country and 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 it's, and it's not it's not a normal it's not a normal people it's not a normal uh situation i you know i say it for the best i i i, I think it's a great thing and i and i and i'm very proud and and happy to to be a jew and to be part of of you know of this long history of people who 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 keep this uh, this faith and this tradition uh, of the Bible and 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 who carry this 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 message of I I find this message of freedom to the world like there there are many profound so it met me on many different levels like on a, on a, on a belief level on an identity level on a geopolitical level on a personal level on like like I could go into each of the ones. I just mentioned if you would like. Um, it's it also made me realize that we only I don't know if to say we, it's not true that I was it's not like I woke up. It's not like I woke up that day. I was already beforehand uh, uh, I wasn't like uh, progressive or, or, or anything like that i listen to 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 certain uh, philosophers and 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 so on that are considered more conservative and and i have my 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 religious um feelings and practices that i practice that goes on with me for years already it didn't it did not uh start now so to speak um but there's something about this moment that really made things sharp and clear certain things that beforehand were, were 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 vague and could go either way it's now to me obvious that you cannot claim anymore you know you cannot claim anymore that um many things many things that you cannot claim anymore uh so 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 kind of took me took me off the fence if you will like sometimes it's easier to just sit on the fence you have one leg there one leg here and and you see what what, what goes on for me this event to totally took me off the fence and obviously i know <laughs> you know which side i'm on and all this kind of thing um and i don't think you know it, it, it doesn't contradict kind of trying to understand the other side etc but i see zero attempt of of the other side to understand uh, me whatsoever so my motivation also to 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 you know to whatever to kind of justify their their cause or anything like this completely uh, went down it's 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 a situation where and also my sister lives on the northern border so there hezbollah is threatening to attack so she had to to move away from her home and they are not even Palestinian, so-called. So to me, it's obvious. I know that we have a lot of enemies in the area, and they all want to push us to the sea. And and you know, people think about it like Israel is the big, big, uh, you know, strong force because because there is such press about Israel. But it's such a small country, and it's such a small place, and it's surrounded by so many countries. haters, yes, countries and Muslim countries and. And also, you know, the, the whole religious aspect that I, I think that there is a there is a strong motivation in the West to deny the religious aspect because the religious aspect is the most explosive. Like 
So there, but but so there is self convincing that no, it doesn't have anything to do. Right now, if if we just organize the conditions so that uh, that, that this would be possible to 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 live next to each other, then they will give up their religious belief of of jihad, etc. So I also went into to 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 study more. I think I knew probably more than the average uh, Western person about 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 the roots of of, of jihad in Islam, etc. And and the kind of religious uh, 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 commitment that they have to uh, take over the world basically to 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 uh, it's it's not it's nothing hidden they 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 they're they saying it that they think this is the this is the religion of truth and they need to spread it they spread the word and i think it's very you know alarming and dangerous and i think we've ignored it for a long time because we thought nah it's only the religious it's only the fanatics most people just want to go home and and you know and and bring food to the table think you know okay on an average day perhaps that's true but then comes suddenly the day the, suddenly comes the day of the call and 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 and, and people are are standing uh, to 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 the cause and they're committing jihad and they are they are proud of it the, the, the you know i heard i heard a voice recording of of one of the terrorists i don't know even how to call them that committed these atrocities and he's calling his father and he's saying papa papa i killed 10 jews with my own hands and the father is so proud of him and he's so and so you understand that the excellent figures of of of, of this society are murderers and uh Jew murderers is the is the, is the creme de la creme is the top of, is the cherry on the, on top of the cake. So I don't I don't see how like you know Adam. Now I would like to ask you about you know the current situation of Jews Jewish community Jewish society in Germany. How do you feel? Do you feel anxious? Uh, do you feel fear, or uh, do you feel are you safe in uh, in Berlin right now due to lots of marches and anti-Semitic uh, actions on the streets? So I think that the reaction of the German government was was quite on on spot and on time, and they they really tried to stop it at the source. And uh, Councillor Schulz uh, directly spoke against it in a way that does not uh, does not interpret in two ways. And th there was a lot of police. There were also also a lot of sirens around. The first two weeks, it was almost as if here is also kind of a war. Every time I went out on the street, there were sirens. I went to meet um, I went to meet a friend. He's also an Israeli. He's married to a, to a, to a German woman. He lives in another neighborhood, so we met in another neighborhood because here in Neukölln we kind of felt uh, unsafe, or he felt unsafe, or so. So, so we are meeting in Schöneberg now uh, every week, kind of to 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 support each other. But there was very much so the feeling of like let's not talk Hebrew uh, out loud, so people don't understand us, so people don't recognize, etc. And uh, and. Uh, I go to, like I said, I go to, I go to the synagogue every Saturday morning, and uh, and there's police outside there, obviously protecting protecting the synagogue, and uh, so I don't know if I can talk in the name of you know the Jewish community because I'm like an Israeli living here. It's not exactly the same thing of you know Jewish people growing up here. I saw one one guy who who attends the prayers and. Uh, and I saw him on the way, and he was wearing his kippah. And this is Neukölln in Kreuzberg. And he was wearing the kippah just outside on the street, walking fearless. But I think he grew up here, and and he he kind of refuses to 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 cave in. But I I would definitely not uh, walk around with the kippah, you know, where where where, where I live, and I don't. The, the, there are some points where it, like I speak Hebrew to my daughter, so there are some points where she's answering to me in Hebrew, but somebody passes that I feel it is a little bit unsafe, so I try not to answer. Or I answer her in English, or even when I stand out my window to 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 smoke a cigarette and I talk to to a friend, if somebody passes by that I feel a little bit suspicious, I would 
switch to English. But all in all, the beginning was the worst. The beginning, the first two, three weeks was really like a shake in the in the in the in the personal security feeling. And I also changed the locks in my house, made it stronger, etc. Try to understand how you know how would I protect myself if 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 anything not that I came up with any you know with anything but strengthening the locks uh, and uh, but uh, there was definitely a feeling of 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 like danger to 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 my own personal uh, safety and my family but it also weakened now now I don't know if I got used to the situation or it's the winter it's snowing outside it's or, or maybe it's the fact that um, Israel is now retaliating, uh, at least before the ceasefire. This could also be connected to the fact that the street is is quieter. Um, but still, you know, there's certain uh, parts of of the neighborhood that uh, that I would avoid or go only at night on my bike rather than walk uh, during the day. But do you see an anti-Semitism on street? I mean, what is anti-Semitism? If you see a guy with a kafia and he's walking around proud and he's holding a flag of... Uh, 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 I mean, you know, signs with the start of, start of David, for example. Oh, like yeah, in yeah. France. Or, no, not uh, the or, of David, so... or voices on the street, you know. I, I I mean I see a flag like uh, Arabic writing with the with the flag from the river to the sea you know the whole land of Israel uh, and there was lots of graffiti and there were also um, pamphlets like A4 things and and they were saying something like uh, uh, Germany you should stop your stop your guilt or something enough with the guilt mm -hmm. towards what you did like basically it's the most anti-Semitic. Thing that you can say like the Germans should support <laughs> the Free Palestine movement because to get rid of their own guilt or something like this uh, and stuff like it will release the Jews if the, if, if 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 Palestine will be uh, blah blah blah. Um, I refuse to you know you know the 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 source of the name Palestine uh, is it was given by the Greeks. To mm -hmm. the land of Israel, basically, is a punishment to the Jews, which were their bitter enemies, because you had the whole. The, we're soon celebrating Hanukkah, the whole war of the Greeks against the Jews with the Maccabites, mm -hmm. uh, and the destruction of the Second Temple. So their way of punishing the Jews uh, that were on the land, of course, for 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 many many years before Islam was even uh, created, existing. Yes. Uh, uh, so, so, so they named the, the land Palestine after the the biblical enemy Plishtim that is mentioned in the Bible. Yes. So to think that this was some kind of country that existed long before the horrible Zionist Jews came is just an illusion. There was never a country called like that. They, it's a name that the Greeks gave to the land uh, in order to punish the Jews. And and when the British mandate was, they kept using the Greek name, but they also had in brackets, Aleph Yud, Eretz Israel, Palestina, Eretz Israel. It was always obvious, and there were always Jews on the land, and from one point, Arabs as well. So all, also all this claim of, you know, of occupation, <laughs> it's also, you know, I, I, I used to live in Jerusalem, and every time I, and very close to, to the old city, and every time I would see the, the the mosque there with the golden yeah. cape you know it's a beautiful building but every time i would see it i would think to myself yeah of course they conquered the land so they put a mosque on where was the holiest place for the jews which was beta mikdash so if anything anybody's conquer or occupation or imperialism it's the muslim imperialism over mm -hmm. over the land of israel and 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 the, the the you know this claim that it's it's the opposite is is again it, it's based in ignorance because people think that because the first Zionistic Jews that came on the land came from Russia and Poland, places where there was terrible anti-Semitism. But not only, they also came from Morocco, Morocco and they also yes. came from Iraq, and they were also, you know, uh, uh, class B citizens there, and they were basically, in the end, thrown out of these from, countries. Also from other uh, Muslim countries, like Yemen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yemen, Morocco, Libya, all these... Libya. I, I grew up 
with people in 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 my own class growing up we had you know moroccans tunisians ethiopians russians you know my, per personally my 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 father's family came from bulgaria after mm -hmm. the second world war but they were they spoke ladino so they were obviously expelled from spain the big yes. the big uh, in the 13th century i think there was a big jewish community there and a famous uh, with the Inquis inquisition and the and the famous uh, exile basically of the of the of a lot of the jews in spain and then they spread out so they arrived in bulgaria there so you know this claim as if israel is a colonial colony then where is the homeland you know britain had colonies in india the homeland was 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 britain if 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 the jews have colonies then where, where is the homeland you know it's judea you know and i know it's more complex than that because it's yeah. true that since 1967 there is military control over uh i think it's around uh, 3 million people in the in the west bank and it's a problematic situation but when they demonstrate and they say occupation they mean the mere existence of of the state you know there 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 are israeli left wing people who are who are waving the flag of 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 ashraf of the plo uh, in 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 demonstrations in tel aviv and they mean let's let's finish the 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 military uh, control over civilians in the West Bank and give the give them a state and 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 so they mean something totally different when they say occupation and when the Palestinians are saying occupation which they mean the mere existence of the state and I don't personally I don't think that they ever had a, a you know a plan the, the the whole Oslo Accord was just one one step in the way of taking it all back yes Arafat famously was interviewed uh, in Egypt after the Oslo Accord, and, he told, and the 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 reporters were asking him, "How could you recognize the, the you know they used to, they didn't even say Israel back then they said the, the the Zionistic entity or something like this. How did you did you recognize the Zionistic entity?" And he told them, "Remember Hudaybiyah. Hudaybiyah is uh, some kind of agreement that uh, the Prophet Muhammad said." Uh, 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 settled basically to fool his enemies. He 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 fooled them into having a peace treaty, and then he conquered them. Uh, so, and Yasser Arafat directly referred to that. So it was obvious that they don't want this solution, the two-state solution, etc. But this is a whole other subject that we can get into. But my point is, people people um, live under the illusion. That the problem is uh, is you know nineteen what happened after nineteen sixty seven, and I'm not saying it's not a problematic situation, and I don't know how to how to get out of it and what's the solution. But I am saying that you need to understand that the conflict started even way before forty eight. The conflict started in nineteen twenty nine. There were pogroms in Hebron. There was a Jewish community there forever. Yes. Hebron was the first place, by the way, that was given to to that Abraham uh, bought. It's mentioned in the Bible that he bought it for 400 uh, shekels of back then uh, because he wanted the place to be buried. So it's the first place mentioned that was actually owned by uh, by Abraham. And uh, and there were Jews there all the time. In 1929, there was a horrible massacre, very, very reminiscent of this massacre. And it happened before the state even existed. And you had Khaj Amin al-Husseini, which was the... The head of uh, of um, of of uh, it, it wasn't even the Palestinian uh, nationalistic movement back then. It was the Arab nation. You need to also understand there's there's the background of 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 what is called the Palestinian national movement. It started basically in 1964. It didn't start so early. Like they revolted against the the British. They revolted against uh, uh, um, you know, other other. Uh, occupiers that were there before imp empires etc but they never related to themselves as palestinian they were felt like the part of the big arab uh, nation they wanted to be the south of big syria and mm -hmm. so you need to understand that in 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 in, in arab eyes even the, the 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 separation to syria and lebanon and palestine and whatnot is 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 something that is forced upon them by the west by colonization of the british and the french so and and I and I and I saw um, we used to have a member of parliament called uh, what was his name Azmi Bshara, 
Doctor Azmi Bshara. He used to be a member of an Arab Israeli who, who had a blue passport. He had all the rights. He was elected to the Knesset, to the Israeli Knesset. Uh, and he spoke uh, on, on, on Israeli national TV. And he said there, the, there is no such thing as a national uh, movement for, for, for Palestine. It's the Arab uh, national movement. Mm -hmm. And he ended up being from a member of parliament for the Israeli government, meaning he got all the rights, etc., for being, uh, he went to 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 fight along uh, Hassan Nasrallah in, in in Hezbollah. So, to to kind of disconnect this, th there is something manipulative about the way that they always present themselves as so small and poor and nobody supports them and blah blah blah. It's part of a whole. It's part of a whole uh, conception, you know, that if you take the national part of it, is still about. From the river to the sea, it's still about creating the big Arab nation, mm -hmm. and this is in the kind of secular part. And if you take the the the, the more religious radical like Hamas or or Hezbollah, uh, the, the, then it's part of of a global jihad. So to kind of uh, decontextualize it as if the, you know, it, it, it's absurd. And uh, I also, you know, I lived in Jerusalem, very close to the to the east of the city. You studied. I had. Hmm? You studied there. I studied there, yeah. Studied music in in uh, Jerusalem, really on the kind of border between east and west, the old border that used to be sixty seven. Of course, now there is no border anymore. And we had friends. We had uh, two uh, Arabs from East Jerusalem uh, that were metal collectors, and my my flatmate, who was an artist, uh, befriended them, and they would help her collect junk for her experimental art stuff. And we would sit and drink whiskey and, you know, and talk. And uh, and after a, the first couple of times, it was just nice. And I didn't want to ask them or to mention anything. And, but after a while, I, I had to ask them, like, do you see me as an enemy? Do you want a state? And I was amazed by their reaction. <laughs> their reaction, Abu Shaban was his name. He told me, are you kidding me? A state? What state? He told me, Abu Mazen, he's taking all the money that he's getting from Europe and he's sending his son to study in Oxford and he's building himself a castle. And he told me they live off the blood of the people. Mm -hmm. They live off the blood of the people. They have a, a, an interest that the conflict will will continue. Mm -hmm. This is their this is their livelihood. The conflict is their livelihood. Yeah, because uh, it was all money that comes from the whole world, from the United States, from the European Union, and so on, goes to not Gaza, yeah, normal people, and to, to help them, but to Hamas. Yeah, he, the, the Palestinian Authority pays terrorists that committed murders in Jews. They pay salary to them or to their families because a lot of the times they are they are Shahids. They 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 are paying them salaries. So. You know, and build tunnels, and build tunnels, and Egypt, which we have a you know peace treaty with, must have must have been part of 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 what happened. Now there's no way all this weapon passed to the Gaza Strip via Israel, because Israel was controlling it. And again, you know, people were were claiming, ah, you are you are. Um, you know, there's a siege on 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 Gaza, etc. But yeah, because every everything that comes in is used for weapon against us, and you see that even with this siege, that was it was you know it wasn't enough, obviously. So I think if people really want to see some kind of solution, they need to start putting pressure on the side that is completely irresponsible about about this. And if if there was some, there was one leader of of uh, the so-called Palestinian people. Salam Fayyad, mm -hmm. who the Americans kind of uh, prompted because they realized that he would be a partner for 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 peace, so to speak, and he really did want to build a nation, meaning a nation that is that is busy with creating life for the people there and not just continuing this death cycle. But he had around two percent support in the Palestinian people until this day. They're not making uh, elections in the West Bank because. In the Gaza Strip, I may remind you, Israel left the Gaza Strip in 2005, yeah. and there were democratic elections, and the Americans, you know, insisted on there being democratic elections, and Hamas came, came, mm -hmm. came, came, came as winners, and they know the same thing would happen in the West Bank. So there's also something about claiming that, you know, it, it, as if it's some kind of innocent people that just has a barbaric uh, leadership 
is not not exactly correct also it's obvious that the people do support them and 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 i'm not saying each one of them would go and fight but i'm saying that there is there is a very very big you know problem what they are taught in the schools etc and this again the 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 the, the paradox here you need to understand that before the, the oslo accord the education system was still the same education system that was when they were under Jordanian occupation. You know, the West Bank until 1967 was controlled by Jordan, which, by the way, why was why was the Palestinian not revolting against Jordan or against Egypt when they controlled there? I personally know people, my mother, you know, she went on it after 67, she went on a taxi to, to the Temple Mount and her... her Taxi driver was an Arab from uh, from East Jerusalem, and he told her that in 1967 they were ecstatic. They were happy, so finally to be under Israel rather than under Jordan, you know. Um, and there was there was there was trade with Gaza before the Oslo Accord. So the whole kind of conception that if we just give them a state, then it will then it will then it it will finish and it will end, you know. It's just an illusion. It's not the truth. It's kind of the in in a way the opposite is the truth. So, I think that there are many possibilities and ways to think about how to get out of of, of it. And you also need to understand that the Palestinian, um, so again, so called Palestinian society is 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 uh, very divided in itself. It's it's a tribe based society. Uh, I was a soldier and I served in Hebron, and the most violence that I experienced there was. Arabs between them and themselves. Every day there was a funeral and it was a fight of Hamulas. It was a fight of tribes. Just like, so it's a very tribal society and a very violent society. And it's also violent towards uh, women and gays don't talk about it. Like if you're gay in Gaza, you'll get thrown off the rooftop, etc. So this is also why I find it very um, peculiar that they would have such support in the in the progressive left you know, again, it's either people are lying to themselves or they are stupid or they are ignorant. I don't know exactly how to how to how to explain it. Or you know, obviously, yeah, anti-Semitism, the, the the classic hatred of Israel, and also of the message that the Jewish people bring to the world. The the Jewish people bring to the world the message of basically, you know, there is good and evil. There is God. There is moral. There is. And I think this is a message of freedom. And, and, you know, again, till this day, if you go to the United States, if you go to the United States Supreme Court, there is a statue there of Moses bringing the, bringing the, the Luchot Abulit from, from the Mount of Sinai. Why? Because this is the basic of what then became moral and ethic and, and, and stuff that, that is still predominant uh, in the Western world. So I think there's an attempt to, to, to get rid of that, to destroy these ideas. You know, nowadays, but of, of, of kind of radicalized young people who think that they are, you know, revolting against the cruel uh, imperialism or blah blah blah. But you know, first of all, in the case of you know America, the, America took took the lands from 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 the from the from the indigenous, uh, you know, whatever you want to call them, Native Americans, Indians, whatever whatever name you you choose. But basically, from the people who are the tribes who are indigenous to. To America and America will never go back to where so 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 the young people there who are feeling guilty about their own society are you know are, are taking this guilt against Israel as if Israel is some kind of uh, symbolizes this not now we are Western colonists but but it's ludicrous it's ridiculous the Jewish people have always had the connection to the land of Israel the the city of Jerusalem was you know came to its greatness because of King David and King Solomon and and there is absolutely no mention of of, of Jerusalem also in the Quran to think that uh, you know if you hear I, I heard the Saudi blogger talking about uh, about uh, El Aqsa El Aqsa is a place that is it's called El Aqsa means in Arabic the far the further away so there was there was Mecca Medina and there was one mosque that was holy to the Prophet Muhammad far further away but still in Saudi Arabia and they are saying a lot of them are saying a lot of Muslims uh, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, saying that, that we have nothing with Jerusalem, it's an invention. You know, it's an invention of their own imperialism. But the Western, actually, actually, I find this this to be racist. Meaning, the Western cannot think of 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 the Arab as being a, a kind of a conqueror or something like this, because they they perceive him uh, as as inferior, or something like this. And I find this to be much more uh, racist than 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 
you know, than what they are claiming that racism is. Um, you know, I, I listen to them. I listen to what they say. I listen to what they want. They're saying it very clearly, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know. Okay, uh, now the situation in Israel, in the Gaza Strip, is uh, it calm, yeah? Because we have a ceasefire, and now with uh, uh, Russian hostages, yeah? How do you find yeah. the situation, these proportions? More terrorists from Gaza that we know, examples that the people, Gaza, uh, that were taken to Israeli prisons were terrorists, yeah? And for example, you have to take free Gazans from the jail, and uh, for this free people, you take one Israeli person. How do you find this this proportion? Well, first of all, it goes to show you that the value of life in uh, the Israeli society is higher than the value of life in the Arab society. Mm -hmm. First of all, yeah, we are willing to pay more for for life because we we sanctify life. Life is sacred for us, and 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 for them, death is sacred. It's completely the opposite. Uh, when when you're talking about Shahid, to die as a martyr is an honor. Listen to Yichir Sinwa, the head of Hamas. He says, "I want, I want the, I want to die as a Shahid. I want this honor." And they are also promised seventy-two virgins, uh, virgins in the sky, which also shows you something about what's what's the most important to them. Um, how do I find the situation? I think. How that you if if I I can tell you what uh, what I wish for what I hope. Sure. I think Hamas must Hamas must be taken down. I yes. think that this that there's a very very uh, dangerous predicament that was created here, and all our neighbors and all the Arab world and all the enemies of Israel all over the world are looking. And if it turns out that they are coming out as winners, if 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 this organization still exists after after the after this war, then it will encourage many 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 other enemies to do exactly the same thing. I think it's and possible the, to do it in this campaign. Yes. Why not? Because now the ceasefire is the chance for them. Yeah, so that's why I, I, I was personally against it. I I I, I think that you know, the hostages is so breaking the heart. They took ten month old babies, and it's it's tearing my heart apart. You know, it's not like every Israeli. It's tearing every Israeli's heart apart, and I think a lot of people are you know in the world because it's so so horrible and inhuman. And the thought that they are there one more moment is intolerable. So I also understand you know, the motivation for making uh, the exchange. But actually, it's used as, uh, on behalf of the other side, I think it's used as, as, as again, as, as a kind of, um, it's part of the war. It's part of the war. They can re, they can re, they, you know, they can refuel. They got now more fuel. They got now more, uh, uh, and, and the, the kind of international credit on behalf of, uh, of the world, whatever you know, whatever that means uh, to 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 this campaign is going down and slowing down. So long as we are getting further further away from the seventh of October, I think they know that, and I think the Israeli government also created a very problematic predicament with it. But it goes way back; it goes to the Shalit uh, deal. Gilad Shalit was a soldier that was kidnapped to Gaza, and uh, there was a very big. Uh, uh, campaign to 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 release him and uh, Netanyahu released 1027 uh convicted murderers for 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 one soldier and a lot of them are the ones who are leading uh, Hamas now and who are, who created this massacre which another 1400 uh, Israelis died so if you ask me what we like the, the the nation of Israel needs to do to do after this is to make a law that this is not allowed to negotiate with 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 terrorists. with terrorists. so they don't have the motivation now we are making the motivation they know they will kidnap ah then then they will get to the and and for sure not to stop the 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 not to stop the attempt to 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 destroy them to destroy Hamas for uh, for for uh, you know, for the life of, uh, you know, and, and it's very, again, it's very cruel to say, because if, you know, if knock on wood, if one of my people were there, of course, I would go and lobby for it. 
but in a way it serves the other point where the, the the campaign to free the hostages in israel is putting the price up they see it and they know that the government is under this pressure and it's putting the price up so in a way i know that until i think this was until again the, the 60s or something like this it was not allowed that there was a law in israel that it's not allowed to negotiate with terrorists and when they kidnapped the the plane to to Entebbe, for example, the the IDF went and got all the people, but they did not negotiate, uh, and, and a heroic act, which in which the brother of Netanyahu, Yoni Netanyahu, which by the way I met his girlfriend once in Tel Aviv, his girlfriend that used to be, and they have a letter, famous letter exchange, etc. I, I spoke to her once. Um, he died in this operation. And uh, I think he was the only one or maybe a few other soldiers died or a couple of the hostages, but all in all, they released all the hostages and it was a military and it was a military operation. So if you ask me, you know, my feelings about it, I I, I really hope that this doesn't doesn't uh, stop the the effort to 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 win, to win against this horrible enemy. OK, and um, in the end of this conversation, because we don't more than one hour, um, I would like to ask you about uh, contacts and interpersonal contact in Berlin. Because people know your friends uh, that you are a Jew from Israel. So when you talk with them, so what what is their opinion about that situation? Do they agree with you or do they agree with Hamas and their pro-Israel and so on? I have to say, I got uh, I got some support, a lot of support, especially from the German German friends or, or people that I have. Um, I don't know what they are then going home to say, but to me they were nice and they, and they offered support. I know that uh, my uncle, he's he's English. My mother came to Israel from England, mm -hmm. and so my uncle uh, lives in Munich, and uh, his ex wife wrote to me. To say how concerned she is, and actually she said that uh, she is looking at Poland as an inspiration and stuff like this. I don't know <laughs> how how you take this. It's probably because of your own uh, government, which I don't know how, how how you know how great you think you think it is. But uh, so she said that. But you know, I my, my feeling about it was, was was great. It was it was it was a feeling of support. Um, I spoke to it about it with my boss at work and he expressed support. But of course he also says, yes, but you need to understand the other side. Ta, ta, ta. I get it. That the, there is ambivalence and, and people are people who don't have to be kind of off the fence will stay on the fence so long as they can, in a way. People who have the tendency to go against uh, Israel are going against people who have the tendency, but all in all, I think the the kind of average European person. But I think that there is awakening in 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 Europe to 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 you know it's not only you know even if you take Israel away from the equation you still have a lot of of people here who believe that uh, you know I I saw interviews in German with young young uh, Muslim uh, boys who were born in Germany and they are saying they are saying every Muslim that will tell you that they don't want Germany to become uh, under uh, Sharia law is lying to you. Because it's we are committed to it, but we will be committed to it once we are the majority, and until we are the majority, our jihad is via the womb of the woman. So we want to make a lot of children. I don't know how, how you know how what, what, what I think what, you know what to make of it. I think probably a lot of them escaped the the the, the, the their horrible you know war 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 ridden countries and came here to just live peacefully but in the same time they do show support and they do show um you know i wouldn't you know i wouldn't celebrate with candy you know even even if there is a great victory uh, i wouldn't you know but, but many people die etc i will not go out and, and and celebrate with candy and i will not go out with with the flag here in the streets because what I don't I don't understand why should they trouble the German people with this even you know I find it indecent that they will go down in 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 packs of you know 50 100 people and shake the 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 doors of of the U-Bahn station with the flags and it's creating fear I think yes. that there is a lot of fear and there is a lot of fear to talk 
there is a lot of fear to talk against against it in general because we saw also what happened in France because uh, ah, if you say something against uh, Islam then and, and the teacher that was beheaded and and stuff like this and the Charlie Abdo there's this thing of respect that you shouldn't so so people just don't but I think it's this a very dangerous a very dangerous point to 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 this to this fear like if 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 we let this fear control then the, you know then it might take over i think that europeans are, will have to stand for whatever they believe in even if that means i don't know what you know the party life or the liberalism or all this kind of thing it's still it's something that you might have to fight for and I knew it coming from I knew it coming from Israel uh, a long time ago already. I told I asked my 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 friend and my music partner partner Philip. Mm -hmm. uh, that he's from he's from Germany. I think it was after the Bataclan attack. We spoke about it, and his his major concern was that now the right wing would use it and and blah blah. And I told him, okay, yeah, sure, that you know that this this is a concern, but in the same time, like, what do you think about the thing itself? Like, you know, it's not only the reaction; it's also. You know, now in, in, in Ireland, for example, uh, five uh, five children were stabbed mm -hmm. and, and it caused a reaction of, you know, the far right in Ireland, burning a bus, etc. So and the way the news reports it is riots of the far right, as if it was completely out of context, as if it was not a reaction for, 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 for brutal murder. And again, I'm not saying what I'm saying in order to justify the, 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 the Irish, uh, you know, fascists or whatnot. But I'm saying what I'm saying to 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 kind of understand that th there's been there's been um, atmosphere that is created that this topic is not to be talked about because of the past of Europe with the Jews because of the guilt. Then, if you say anything against you know immigration, you say anything against, then you are automatically a Nazi, automatically a, a, a racist. So these actually these topics were not were not even. Um, were not even allowed to be on the table until before the 7th of October. Suddenly now they're coming up like, like, like a river because it's understood that you cannot ignore it anymore. And again, I don't have any, you know, I don't have any solutions and who am I to, 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 you know, to consult Europe about what Europe should do. Uh, it's bigger than, it's bigger than me. I have my own, my own family, my own concerns, my own, my own things, but I, but I can definitely say, I think, or hope that there would be, um, more you know open conversation and on point and also you know fact based and like okay you know let's check it's not it's not just i'm not i'm not making a you know i'm not making a racist remark if i say that islam is is uh, is uh, you know sanctifying uh, jihad it's actually written you know it's not like i'm mm -hmm. no, it's it, it's just not the point there are also a million um sorry am, are we going past the time yes yeah one minute left okay. so uh, in the end, I would like to thank you very much for this conversation. Uh, we all, I think that we all hope that all hostages will be released and the war will finish in uh, the only one possible solution. It was really interesting and good. I hope that people um, who watch this, 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 this video uh could uh, could get your point of view and point of view of Israeli people for everything what is happening in Israel in Gaza and in Berlin right now. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Piotr. Thank you very much for for your time and for your questions and for your insights. Uh, yeah, had a good time and uh, I hope. I hope this will be of interest to anyone and uh, and I hope good shall prevail. <laughs>